do you get much uh, questions from your neighbors? I get uh, some and, about your system here. You know, my goal is to become facile enough at this understanding that um, uh, I can be a resource to my neighbors because yeah. in this county there are 600 creeks. Wow. And even a little creek can produce you know one or two kilowatt hours of juice a day yeah and mine isn't even a big creek by right. by these standards and at this time of year i'm producing as i said somewhere between eight and twelve kilowatt hours just depends where i have the setting right which i don't at this time of year with the solar panels just chewing up the, the power i keep it basically a trickle charge level level uh, come next month when the sun starts receding to the south, I'll turn it up a little bit and then for October and early part of November I'll keep it going pretty well full blast Yeah. just to make sure I'm topped off all the time. So tell me, when you originally uh, were looking for this property, did you have micro hydro power in mind or not? I did. I've had micro hydro as a dream since I was about 15 years old. <laughs> okay. Uh, purely uh, as an amusing fascination uh -huh. and I thought you know this this is just um, it's just a resource it's a non non interference resource non consumable resource uh, that uh, it would be really cool to have that as an asset and in the state of Virginia the laws are essentially that um, if you have non-consumable water use on your property, uh, you're good to go. No permits, no nothing. Wow, that's So I'm great. taking the water off of my creek on my property and putting it back in the creek on my property with no alteration to the water itself. I'm not polluting it. I'm not changing anything. So in Virginia, at least, there's no permits involved. Wow, um, that's good. And, and for me, uh, when we went looking for property 20 years ago, having a creek that could support this technology was, was if it wasn't number one on the list, it was not far from being number one on the <laughs> okay. list. And, and it's great. And my property line is only a, you know, a few hundred feet up there, probably 400 feet. Um, as I said, I, I moved the intake from up there down here. I actually had built a, uh, a double wall coffer dam up there. Yeah, I remember you but, telling me about hauling those bags of concrete yeah, mortar mix up there. Yeah. It was not an easy chore. It was not. <laughs> I, had to, I had to borrow a four-wheeler from a friend. And it turned in the long run to be not not necessary. I was I was trying to over over squeeze the the, the system to be more uh, more more output than I need. Yeah. I mean all of that all of that civil engineering is still there. I could still hook it all up if I need to. I don't right. happen to need to at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm finding that for for my use, which includes a fairly typical woodworking, metalworking shop, all day, every day, that's what I do. I have I have all the juice that I that I want. Um, the only the only times that I've ever had the system uh, not work were were either my fault or um, a natural lightning ground, ground strike mm -hmm. through through the through the switches, which is what you want it to do. Right. And it took me a minute to figure out, you know, why in the world was this happening? Well, it's because there was a lightning strike really right nearby, and something had charged the system in its entirety, and had thrown a safety breaker switch. So as soon as I figured that out, mm -hmm. and the only other time is when I forgot to, I I forgot to throw a switch in the system because there's a that's a very specific order that you have to turn it on and turn it off. Right. So Don, what would you say to some of our viewers that are thinking they'd like to get into micro hydro power? What advice would you give them? Well, um, make sure that you give a lot of thought to your uh, topography and your civil engineering of getting water from uphill to downhill and making sure that that's intact. And in terms of the um, uh, turbine, I, those are pretty much bulletproof. You just you just get a good quality turbine and, and go with it. And make sure that you do work with uh, 
uh, either you or somebody else to make sure that you get the right size turbine because not getting the right size is a problem. Mine is just exactly right for me. And in terms of the electronic side of things, um, make sure that you don't underestimate your usage needs. In other words, you don't want to have to go back in and reconfigure a system if you need more power than it's generating uh, or it can handle. So in our case, I was really happy that when we were first talking about it, I, I sort of put a sky's the limit sort of usage because I don't know what machines I'm going to be using at any one time and I don't want to have to change what I'm doing based on what the system can handle. So um, getting, getting good quality uh, components that are designed to fit your needs, uh, it may sound like a cliche, but that's a real deal. You want to make sure that all the pieces are, are designed uh, to go together and then finally have a lot of fun with it because it is it is a whole lot of fun. It's something I wanted to do for, you know, almost 40 years before we installed it. So uh, I'm still I'm still enjoying enjoying the complete system every day, and I have a, um, a professional quality workshop up the hill, and it all runs out of off of the system that you put together for me. So that's that's my advice. Just give it a lot of thought, and then pay attention to what your needs are and what the resources of your piece of land are. And if you do that, then it's all fun from there. Thanks a lot, Don. You bet. Bye.